Carbonara. They say it's a dish of legendary simplicity. This recipe is simple and easy. Oh, no, 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 no. My eggs have basically scrambled in here. Nothing is very good. I mean, that's an absolute failure. It requires a lot of really, really good ingredients. Oh my God, this is the actual cheese that they use in carbonara. It smells so meaty and porky, and maybe most of all, a lot of really, really good technique. I, I don't know why this is so challenging. This is supposed to be a simple recipe. We're gonna find out if a home cook, me, can make a delicious and authentic spaghetti carbonara in the home kitchen. Today, I try to master carbonara. This feels like it should be a relatively simple recipe, right? I mean, it's basically only four ingredients. We've got some spaghetti. This is bronze cut spaghetti. Where does it say it on there? Right in here. The second thing that carbonara has is an egg. Here I chose grana padano. This is an Italian cheese. I think this is gonna be good enough for us. And then I've got some bacon here. Carbonara is basically like it's a breakfast pasta. It's bacon and egg sort of in pasta form. So let's cut down the bacon into sort of bite-sized pieces. Then I'm gonna boil my spaghetti until it's al dente. About 11 minutes according to my package. Once that's done, we can move on to creating the sauce. To make the sauce, I'm going to get a bowl out, crack an egg into here, whisk this until it's combined into basically a paste and then set it aside. A few minutes before my pasta is done, I'm gonna start frying off my bacon. Once the bacon's crispy, I can then add my pasta right into this pan with all the bacon as well as the fat that came off of the bacon and then add in my egg and Parmesan mixture. Oh, no, 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 no. So my eggs have basically scrambled in here. This doesn't look like a sauce. It looks like, well, pasta with slightly scrambled eggs and a bit of bacon. But on this channel, we try everything. So I'm gonna plate this up and let's see how it tastes. Super dry, bacon isn't very good. I mean, bacon's never terrible, but it doesn't go well with the dish. The, the eggs are completely scrambled, completely overcooked. There's basically no sauce to speak of. This is an, I mean, that's an absolute failure. Uh, so I really thought this was gonna be a pretty simple, straightforward challenge, but we basically didn't have a sauce. We had scrambled eggs. Let's park that for a second. Let's come back to that in a few minutes. I'm not sure that we were using the right bacon. I'm not sure that we were using the right even pork product. So let's do some research. Let's see if we can figure out what the best chefs in the world are doing when it comes to carbonaras. Let's check out this video and see what's going on. Yeah, see that looked different than the bacon I was using. We start first from the one Charlie. So it is a different bacon than what I was using. That's guanciale. That's a slightly different type of bacon. It looks like there's more fat in it. And that may be one of the reasons that we didn't get a really, really great sauce. All right, so I think that's step number one for us to get our carbonara right, is we need a really bacony guanciale to do that. I guess that means we gotta go to the market. We gotta go see if we can track down some guanciale near where I live. So this is my local market here. Let's jump inside. I think we should be able to find some guanciale inside. There's cheese over here. More cheese over here. All right, I feel like we're getting closer. That's bacon up there. Let's keep looking. There we go, guanciale. That's what we're looking for. This actually comes from a completely different part of the pig. This is the jowl of the pig or, or, or the cheek of the pig. So you get this streaky piece of meat here and then this fat along the top and the bottom. It smells so meaty and porky and just really, really delicious. What if guanciale is kind of hard to find? What if it's super expensive where you live? Carbonara is supposed to be an everyday dish. It's not supposed to be something that's reserved for fancy occasions. There's a solution. This is pancetta. Pancetta comes from the belly of the pig. So the same spot as the bacon but it's got that nice streaking. It's in a block so we can cut it down into nice big pieces. If you can't find guanciale, pancetta is a close second. The purist might get upset with me, but who really cares? Even if you can't find pancetta, bacon is going to be good enough to make this recipe delicious. Maybe just add a little bit of pepper, but don't let anyone tell you that you have to have guanciale to make this work. But the guanciale isn't gonna solve all of our problems. Remember the eggs, they scrambled. We need to figure out how to make a foolproof sauce. Hmm. Let's go back to the internet and see if we can learn a few more things. And in my first bit of research, I discovered Luciano Monocio. Monocio? My Italian's gonna be terrible. This guy, he is the king of carbonara. So let's watch this video where he breaks down his carbonara recipe to see what he's doing that makes him so good at this. 
All right, so he's using the guanciale like that earlier recipe we looked at. And then he's putting the pasta in a bowl as opposed to in the pan. Yes, yeah, so then using some of the pasta water. That's a good way to make it creamier. Oh, this is interesting. He's using a double boiler. This is an interesting strategy to solve that problem we had of the eggs getting overcooked. Basically, we were introducing them to heat too rapidly. Oh, no, 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 no. The double boiler is probably gonna heat them a lot more gently. I mean, we already basically have the makings of a double boiler because we're boiling our pasta. So let's jump back into the kitchen because I think I've got some good ideas for attempt number two. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. We're gonna cut our guanciale down into, I like them in really, really big pieces. Remember, a lot of the fat's gonna render off. Even if you think they're a little too big, they're gonna get smaller just by nature of the fat coming out. You know, do them however you like them. I think they're kind of cool like this. And that's how Luciano did it in his video. I'm gonna separate the guanciale from the fat. I'm gonna use the fat a little bit later and set all of that aside. And then in a bowl, I'm gonna mix together my egg. And in fact, I forgot something along the way. When I was getting that guanciale from the Italian store across the street. I also got some Pecorino Romano. This is the actual cheese they're gonna use when making carbonara in Rome. Romano, it's from Rome. This is a sheep's milk cheese. It's gonna be really salty. This is gonna be really sharp. This is the cheese that they use. So back to the cooking. I'm gonna grate in some of this Pecorino Romano. Add a bit of pepper, stir all that together. You'll notice I'm using a bigger bowl. We'll get back to that in a second. And then I'm gonna boil my pasta. Again, to al dente, which is about 10 or 11 minutes with this pasta. Once my pasta is done cooking, I'm gonna take it out of the water. I'm gonna add it to the bowl with the egg and the Pecorino Romano cheese. And now that bowl is gonna go on top of the double bowl. And what this is going to do is it's going to gently start to cook my eggs as opposed to harshly cooking them like I did before. I'm going to add a little bit of that guanciale oil to try and form an emulsion and trying to form a creamy sauce. Just keep stirring this and moving it around. If you need to thin it out, add a little bit of pasta water. Once it's completely done, add the guanciale pieces and we can plate this up and see how we did. I can already tell just by looking at this, it is significantly better. Our sauce looks a lot better. It's peppery, porky, really, really good. Let's let's just give this a try though. The guanciale takes us to a whole nother level. We definitely checked that box. And I mean, the sauce, it's interesting. I can't put my finger on what's going on with the sauce. You can see it, it's definitely a sauce this time versus last time, but it's just basically scrambled eggs. There's just something not quite right about it. I, I just, I cannot put my finger on, on what's going on with this. We're close, but we're not completely there. Now carbonara is one of those dishes that I think has been screwed up so many times. I don't know why this is so challenging. This is supposed to be a simple recipe. In carbonara. I don't know why every video opens up with them talking about how easy this is. This isn't the easiest recipe I've ever made. I show you how to make the real carbonara. Yeah, so I did that. So I'm really struggling to figure out what the last piece of this puzzle is, what the last thing I could do. Let's keep watching this video and see if we can figure something out. Yeah, so I got the guanciale. Oh, let's, hold on a sec, I'm gonna rewind that. He's using egg yolks. That's really interesting. So after all that research, I think we only have one more component that we need to master to make a really, really great carbonara. And to do that, I'm gonna use a combination of both whole eggs and egg yolks. It's the more egg yolks you put in, the richer it's gonna be. I'm gonna do a combination, so let's do our last attempt and see if we have the perfect home-cooked carbonara.
this is definitely the best of the three. It's got all three components that make up the perfect carbonara. Finally, we have a really rich sauce from combining egg yolks and egg whites. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. It's so good.